America is no longer the country with the biggest skyscrapers, and it has no mega tall buildings on the horizon. Skyscrapers entered America's top 10 within the past year, with their small fries among the world's tallest. In developing and developed economies, the rise of megacities can be seen to have negative and positive effects from exacerbating and deepening societal problems, inherent inequality and poverty to increasing opportunities for innovation, education, interconnectivity, and development. So in this video, we're going to tell you about why the US is building these massive skyscrapers. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. America is no longer the country with the biggest skyscrapers, and there are no mega tall buildings 600 meters or 1,969 feet on the drawing board, so it's unlikely that it'll regain that prestige anytime soon. New York, then Chicago, laid claim to the world's tallest throughout most of the 20th century. Then in 1998, the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur snatched the top spot by 33 feet from Chicago's Sears Tower. The world's tallest title hasn't returned since. Just one US building cracks the world's top 10, one World Trade Center, its height of 1776 feet, symbolic of the year the Declaration of Independence was signed, places it sixth among the world's tallest. It doesn't appear to be a case of American decline. Many of the innovative techniques and talents raising skyscrapers to new heights come from America. It may be more of a case of rising construction costs, elaborate building codes, and changes in corporate priorities. New York is the most expensive place in the world to build. The average cost is $362 per square foot, according to a Turner and Townsend International Construction Market Survey in 2018. By comparison, Hong Kong is $344 per square foot, the United Arab Emirates is $134, Kuala Lumpur is $96, and Beijing is $75. Finding private investors to bankroll those costs in the USA can be difficult for developers of tall buildings, market uncertainty can complicate deals, especially in multi-year construction projects. Developers often turn to a variety of sources, such as investors, investment banks, and future building tenants, according to TowerInfo.com. Many developers in China, by comparison, are owned by or have connections to the state, making funding less of a problem. It can seem like climate change affects all communities equally. From flash floods and wildfires to record-breaking heat waves, its impacts are spreading from the parched, well-to-do neighborhoods of California's suburbs to Pakistan's waterlogged cities spanning Peshawar to Hyderabad. On closer inspection, however, the impacts of climate shocks and stresses are uneven. I wish I could tell you why areas where people may not have much continue to get hit and lose everything, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir said last month after the worst floods in a quarter century in Gulf poverty-stricken Appalachia. No state or city is exempt from the global climate emergency, but certain cities and neighborhoods are more at risk than others. Latin America, the second most urbanized region in the world, is a case in point where the ravages of rogue weather are most stark in its burgeoning megacities. Like pandemics, crime or inflation, climate upheaval hits the most vulnerable people hardest. In Latin America, rapid urbanization is trampling green spaces and sucking water sources dry. Most of its cities are constructed of steel and concrete and with ever burgeoning traffic, their colossal heat traps, as cities sprawl, they also relieve a trail of depleted groundwater, dead rivers, denuded watersheds, paid floodplains, and desiccated landscapes. Soaring demand for water means one in four cities worldwide is now prey to shortages. By the mid-century, many new megacities will suffer from chronic water scarcity. New York began restricting tall building construction in 1916, a year after the 538-foot equitable building went up at 120 Broadway. It threw a seven-acre shadow on the streets below, according to the New York Historical Society, triggering protests from residents who said it was like being at the bottom of a canyon. In response, New York required setbacks and step-back walls, buildings such as the Empire State Building shaped like wedding cakes to let sunlight reach the streets below. Zoning rules have since given way to other ratios to restrict size. The prospect of employment and a brighter future proved a powerful lure in industrializing societies, drawing people and mass from rural areas to emerging urban centers. Today, the bright lights are continuing to draw people at a faster pace than ever. In 1900, just 15% of the world's population were city dwellers. Today, more than half of humanity lives in urban areas, and by 2030, this figure is expected to reach 60%. A new white paper from Euromonitor, Megacities Developing Country Domination, says there are now 33 megacities, each with populations of 10 million or more. They harbor a wealth of investment, education, and employment opportunities, but also have to contend with issues such as overcrowding, traffic, congestion, air pollution, and income inequality. 
Given that 80% of Latin Americans, in other words, over 400 million people live in cities, the challenges are already apparent. Reduce pollution, decrease traffic jams, and introduce new technologies in transportation and health. There are some of the conclusions of a group of experts who met in Buenos Aires at a recent conference on megacities where discussions centered on cable cars and electric buses rather than flying cars. These electric modes of transport are more efficient and less polluting and noisy, electric transport saves 30% in energy costs and does not produce carbon emissions. The ultimate goal is to make cities more livable and to make the planet more sustainable. For the development of cities, a strategic vision is required and the needs of each city and the desires of their citizens must be known. To this end, the new technologies can favor more efficient modes of transport without affecting public spaces, said Veronica Rafu, a World Bank transportation expert. Some Latin American cities are taking the lead. Rio de Janeiro has a cable car that safely connects residents of the Complexo de Alemão shantytown with the rest of the city in just 16 minutes. Buenos Aires residents use the free Ecobiki bike exchange system to make around 5,000 trips each day. Experts agree that different modes of transport should complement rather than compete with one another and should be adapted to the specific needs of the cities. To this end, public-private agreements play a key role since they enable linking innovation with its social application. Although it's no easy task to transport the 9 million inhabitants of Bogota, the 20 million of Mexico City, or the 19 million of Sao Paulo, there is potential for improvement. In a city like Buenos Aires, cars are at a standstill 75% of the time, said Veronica Paganes, business innovation manager at Mercedes-Benz Argentina. 90% of vehicles that circulate in the city are transporting a single individual. Besides transport, health is another pressing problem in megacities. The concentration of the population in major urban centers implies largely sedentary lifestyles and social environments that present health risks from poor water and air quality to noise pollution and infectious diseases. Half of humanity lives in urban areas, says Luis Perez, a World Bank health expert. Megacities have a strategic importance at the global level, for which reason health problems are a global issue. Clear examples include HIV, the H1N1 virus, radiation exposure in Hiroshima, and the effects of financial disasters, infectious disease, environmental contamination, and chronic illness caused by lifestyle choices. Sedentary lifestyles or tobacco or alcohol use, for example, are the main threats to health in megacities. Smoking, for example, kills 5.6 million people every year, according to the World Health Organization. However, technology is also advancing rapidly in this area. Health systems are already adapting to these new times. Medical procedures are now more efficient and less expensive thanks to long-distance consultations, telefax, and teleconferencing. These are new tools adapted to new lifestyles. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe, and we'll be back soon with another video just for you guys. Until then, take care, stay safe, and be happy, guys.